Hey guys, it's Austin. Welcome to the second Roblox with a scripting tutorial. And uh, today is my last day of school for the school year, so I'm pretty excited to make this tutorial today. Summer of 2015 is going to be great, since everyone's so hyped for summer, there's probably going to be a lot of new game titles coming out, and it's going to be very cool. That does include my own title, currently called Hands of Death, and that's going to be a role-playing game. I don't want to give too much detail out here because this is a tutorial and not an advertisement, so just join my group Nightmare Studios, I'll link that in the description if you want to keep up with that project, and uh, let's begin. Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to go a little more in-depth with basics, and I'll show you what you need to know to make your first script, which we'll get to later on, probably in the next tutorial or two. <coughs> um, okay. Bad cough today. So, first I'll start with variables. You've probably worked with variables in your math class, but whether you have not, I'm going to go over that anyway. A variable is <coughs> used to represent um, number values, string values, just anything you want it to be. Number value like 2, a string value like string. And a string is just a sequence of numbers, letters, symbols. And we'll get to that later on. Um, variable can also hold a boolean value, which is just true or false, basically. <coughs> That's literally true or false. A balloon, boolean value is either true or it's false. We'll use that later on. And we can use variables to print things in the output, which we don't really need right now. And I'll just show you how they work. <coughs> D equals 3. A plus D. If you look at the output, that's 5 because 2 plus 3 is 5. Now we're going to print C. True. I think you get it. <coughs> um, I'm going to show you something called instancing. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. That's what I call it, but that's just the process of inserting an object, something from here into workspace or lighting or whatever you want. At m equals instance dot new message. You'll see message here. That's the big message that pops up on your screen whenever something's happening in a game. <coughs> if you want to set the new instance's parent, you can do that by comma. I'll set this to workspace. Um, pretty sure that doesn't do anything yet, no, because we haven't set the text. M dot text equals hey. Yeah, that's what that does. <coughs> um, it doesn't have to be message. It can be anything you want, really. Uh, now I'm. I guess you got that down. I mean, well, I'll use. I'll explain that more <coughs> later when we use it to actually insert things when we're making scripts. But for now, I'm just going to move on to a very vital part of scripting, which is something called functions, which you may or may not have heard of. A function is a block of code that you write to execute a certain function. It means you write something and it makes something do something. I'll show you. Function cat, we'll name it cat. Press enter and it automatically indents the end for you, which you need to end the block of code so it doesn't keep going forever and mess up your whole script. Um, <coughs> you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't have to have a certain name, but you do have to have parentheses after it when you're making the function because if you maybe want to set a parameter, 
which we'll get to later on. I'm not going to explain that now. That's just how the syntax works. You need to use parentheses. Function cat instance dot no m equals instance dot new message workspace m dot text equals this is a function called cat. This blue line it says. Global M is only used in the enclosing function. Consider changing it to local. <coughs> We're going to change that to local, even though there's actually no need. But what that means is you might have the same variable called M in another place in the script, whether it be in another function or what. But setting something to local means it's only in the scope of that function. So that makes sure it doesn't get confused with anything else because that can mess up your whole script as well. So, and now text, this is a function called cat. Okay, it did not do anything. That's because we did not call the function. We call the function simply by typing the name with the parentheses. That's it. Yeah. So. <coughs> We're going to make that wait two seconds, one second, um, for time's sake, and a wait just means it waits a certain amount of time in seconds before it, the script does anything else. We'll say time equals one, wait time, this, <coughs> no, wait time equals one a time well the same suggestion we'll call it let's change that local it'll so this is a parameter it'll wait the variable wait time and in this case wait time equals one <coughs> then it'll move on to do something else we'll say m colon remove parentheses and remove just simply removes something from workspace or whatever the parent is. It, it destroys it. It waited one second and it removed that. So you see. <coughs> um, so, like I said, boolean is true or false. Uh, int values, the values strings. Mm. Uh, I guess that's it for now. In the next tutorial, I'll will make a script that kills your player and we'll make that in the form of a local script so that I can explain the concept of a local script a little better and yeah I guess that's it for now I only have a couple minutes left before I have to stop recording so if you want to like the video if it helped at all if you learned anything subscribe if you want more uh, join Nightmare Studios in the description if you want to keep up with my project or this tutorial series thingy. Uh, I guess that's it. See you next time.